you and Larry Tagan. Um, Larry has been doing a good job in highlighting to people what the other side of things here in Ghana. Because often they just find find out from the newspapers and the internet about the bad news. And he's been doing a good job in this regard. So although today is my cabinet day, I just took some time to, to speak with you. Um, what the elections, as you rightfully pointed out, they're over. And I've settled my cabinet. I'm moving on to make changes now at other levels, at the level of permanent secretaries, regional executive officers, some of the boards, some, um, some of the CEOs for different companies, because I want to ensure that everyone is working at a pace that I'm comfortable at. If we're, uh, and we need to do that to deliver on the very aggressive program and very expansive program that I promised. So over the past month and a half, I've been working with the international community to raise more resources to finance our program, as well as um, opening up some more avenue for investment flows. This weekend, I'll be going off to London to meet with Prime Minister Blair. He promised me some time ago that they will um, arrange a meeting with investors to come out into Ghana. And then here at home, I've been trying to meet with the opposition, the other groups in the society, to try to get them you know, in a progressive mode to work with us to deliver the program. And I've also been just clarifying to my cabinet the expectations and what I want to see accomplished in this term. So I think we are already running. Um, we didn't need a honeymoon period. We were just up and running. And um, this is what we'll be working at over the next few years. We're busy preparing for World Cup cricket too. What are some of the new legislations you envisage in the near future? Significant legislative agenda on um, the security sector, toughening up penalties, um, reforming some of the laws to give more tools to the police force so they can e effectively address some of the situation or the problems we face now. Um, to, that's very important for me. Traffic. We've had a carnage on our, our roads, and uh, we just today we we're at the cabinet. We were discussing this issue about the reform of the legislation as well as the ticketing system, the penalties, so that um, we can force greater compliance with our laws and ho thereby hopefully reduce the, the carnage on the road. Um, legislative changes in in other areas to. Um, Changing the culture a bit, you know, just a week ago we started pulling up all these signs on the roadways, you know, unauthorized signs, and people um, are very upset with us, some from the private sector. But they would not do this in the United States of America. You can't just paint any old nasty sign and stick it by the roadway. Uh, right, there's a standard and you have to pay for it. But here people think it's a problem. And it makes the place look aesthetically unpleasing, and also it's a hazard for traffic. You know, you can't see the the road signs, etc. So we'll be required to make some tough decisions on littering, on on how people relate to their surroundings. Um, these are all important parts of our program. Are you going to make it like Germany? You find me if you just throw a piece of paper in the floor? No, no. Um, we have to encourage a change in culture too. The, the big stick method, but also through public education. So we're using both approaches. I saw um, from your new list of cabinet ministers, you have many, and I remember your speech in New York recently uh, that uh, you had some issues uh, uh, still not resolved with regards to Mr. Moses Nagamutu, uh, who was the appointed member of parliament in the PAP list. Um, is he uh, appointed to any ministerial position? No, he, he is not. I think I dealt with that issue clearly. I said to people that I thought that Moses, um, after he, he left, um, there was this controversy between him and the party, and I, I urged them to bring him back. He came back, he was on our list, and um, we didn't have to put him in Parliament because there was no promise. The party never promised him anything, but we put him in Parliament, and I spoke with him. so. So I think um, this is how it works. There is a space for everyone in this party, and I intend to keep it that way. A little bit of crime 
Mr. President. Yeah. I re realize uh, having uh, you know followed crime in Guyana for the past uh, couple of years, yeah. that for now crime seems to be like going down here in Guyana. Well, you know, um, we I'm very pleased with some of the successes we've had, but we can't be complacent and. You never know, so we have to be constantly on our guard and keep pursuing the reforms that I promised. And we're going to make changes to the police force to ensure that we can better fight that type of crime. But people abroad can help too, you know, if they talk to their elected officials about the U.S. You know, um, adding to our problems here by deporting large numbers of hardcore criminals. So um, yes, we have had some successes, but and you you have been here for several days. You travel around, you see for yourself, because many people still have the the wrong impression of what takes place in Guyana. You know, I'm glad that your programs can give people a clearer, better picture of what's taking place here. Yes, I see a lot of deportees come from the United States, and you have uh, probably uh, very wisely so to try to get. Uh, the United States experts in crime fighting yes. to come to help here. Yes. So they know what their people uh, do yeah. and how to fight them. Yeah, it's very Mr. costly. Still on the, on yes, Mr. Carrick will be working with us. Um, but, but you know, I just are, ask people to understand how difficult it is because we have to deal with these homegrown criminals and we also have to deal with criminals that are socialized in the U.S. and get sent back to us. And we're not as equipped as, say, the U.S. to deal with them because, you know, it's a poor country. Mr. President, we were traveling on the roads on the East Bank, especially uh, around the Cricket Stadium. Uh, all is not well there, in our opinion. Mm -hmm. Maybe we have the wrong opinion because we're too, uh, you know, only here for a couple of days. And we do not know what is in store mm -hmm. there to make the roads uh, even more passable and wider which, and, which and accessible. There were roads on the East Bank leading up to the Cricket Stadium. Well, it's wider well, there. Well, still some work is still going yes, on. Yes, the work is going on. Yes, that, that's a significant yeah, um, investment because we had, we had a conversion of traffic from the West Coast over the bridge along with traffic on the East, East Bank coming into the city. So before the completion of that four-lane road from the Harbor Bridge into the city, we used to have traffic jams every day that lasted sometimes three, four hours in the morning and the evening. And that has practically been eliminated with the construction of the four-lane road now because the, the traffic doesn't converge there into that the narrow two-lane road. It has four lanes now. You can come down. So we ended the project there at the Harbor Bridge and that would have been adequate um, but then we, we, and it would still be better than most of the approach roads to stay here around the Caribbean. Because